Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about clay soils. Um, pretty much all soils have some amount of clay in it, okay? Uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about expansive clay soil, highly expansive clay soil. It presents an entirely different issue with home leveling um, and, and residential projects just in general. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it, okay? So um, clay soils, do the engineering thing, right? Um, Clay soils, you find out soil type, whatever, you usually check out the EI or the expansion index or the PI, which is the plasticity index. It's kind of uh, the expansion potential of the clay soil because uh, some of it can get like two, three times its normal normal size and, and the plasticity is more of like the uh, permeation strength and so on and so forth. So anything with a really high PI and a high EI is very, very expansive and very, very strong. Okay. Uh, so this is a chronic issue throughout, I mean, most everywhere. Um, especially if you have something like a, they call it, uh, Huachuca, Arizona has those Libby Gulch soils. We had this nightmare project down there where we tried to use a polymer and it didn't work. And then we tried to do piers and it didn't work. And then some engineer recommended that we use helical piers. Uh, we did that and it didn't work. <laughs> and so we basically just wound up refunding most of the client, most of the client's money uh, after doing three entire separate projects in our house. So it can be very daunting to deal with and um, it, it's very challenging, right? So uh, caliche clays is what's more common, uh, not indigenous to uh, Huachuca, Arizona. Caliche clays is what you'll find around like San Diego, LA, all that, all that fun area. So the big thing about clay soil, right? is that uh, once water is introduced into a clay soil, it expands. So if you've got a slab and that's sitting on a footing, once again, always, I'm sorry about my drawings, and uh, you've got this clay soil down here, right? Now, let's assume this is, this is my house, yay. Anyway, so this is my house, and on the outside of the house, we've got another slab, right? So it's seen commonly in garages, on sidewalks surrounding a house or something like that. Um, there's something called stair stepping or a slab can be walking away from the house. That's where you see like a gap right here on the side of the house. And it's not raised or lowered at all, but you can just see it's like widening apart. What's happening is that seasonally when water gets inside there, the clay soil expands and it picks up this concrete slab, right? And then when it constricts, when it dries out, the slab will actually drop, but it'll drop a little further away and further and further and further. So it's like stair stepping away from the house, right? So that's what you call a slab walking away. And that creates, you know, some cracks and some damages on the outside. And this is very, again, very, very, very common, very common um, in areas. And a lot of people ask, you know, how do I stop my slabs from cracking surrounding my house? And the answer is, it's really tough, right? I mean, you can beef this up so it's not a four inch slab anymore and pop some rebar in there or some wire mesh and then grab some rebar and tie it into the house even, which is actually good practice anyway, but whatever. Uh, tie it into the house so it's all like super reinforced and stuff and that might help it. But ultimately you need to make sure you have good drainage and maintenance practices, which will be another video that we talk about later. Um, the thing about clay soil is let's say it's eh, kind of strong, right? So you can expect that as this soil expands, I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna draw soil down here too. So you can expect as this, this soil expands, right? Boop and boop, and it all creates this upward force because I mean, it only expands on itself that's gonna go path of least resistance, which is up at that point, right? So if it's only kind of strong, you can expect the clay soil to push up this slab which is only kind of strong, right? It has very little dead loads. It's just the concrete and whatever right here. And then the live loads, people walking, wheelbarrows, maybe some equipment every once in a while. Nothing really heavy goes on this slab, right? So the slab has no real downbearing pressure. So the upward force of the uh, clay soils creates a, a, a lifting of that slab. And this is the same thing inside a garage, right? If I've got like an overhead view of a garage, right? 
Sometimes they put expansion joints. I like these when they put expansion joints inside the garage to help so it'll crack like all inside here in the expansion joints rather than like on your slab. But depending on, you know, underground water and flow of water and moisture drainage and all that fun stuff, it can be lifting all of this up individually. But if this is all pushing up with, I don't know, let's call it 100 PSI. This is all pushing up with 100 PSI. 100, 100, 100, right? But this slab only weighs like what? 20, I don't know, 20, 20, this is not much, right? Doesn't weigh much pushing down, so that pushes this up. But this here, your footing, has the weight of the structure on it. So the signs of expansive soil and the damage that you'll see will occur on the slab to the inside of the house and to the outside of the house long before it affects the footing or the structure itself. Where do you start running into real issues? If you, uh, that signs and symptoms video I was talking about where you're like reading cracks, right? If you have cracks that doesn't look like a separation, but they're like pushing in. So the paint, like paint pushes out on the side of the wall. That's a good sign that the house is moving, right? And if you take your measurements or your zip level survey on the inside of a house and everything is like minus one inch, minus one, minus one, minus one, by the way, this is plus oh five in this one spot right here, right? And even if this was plus 05 and this was, so the whole house is like level all here and this is plus 05, right? Instead of saying, hey, the entire house has settled down, you could have an expansive clay soil issue that's being affected by your drainage and grading over here, right? So those are all like things to pay attention to and some of the signs and symptoms. How do you fix something like that? So there is, um, Oh, I lost my thing. Sorry. All right. So there is uh, some soils, or sorry, soils. There's some studies out there for like the injection of, so first of all, concrete is not gonna work. So you've got a house. Just so I can, you know, save some time. And then soil. Yay. So you got a house, right? Uh, if you inject a bunch of concrete over here, really you're just putting concrete into dirt and maybe you'll compact everything in super, but if it's got a really high EI or PI, then the concrete doesn't do anything to mitigate water flow or, or stop moisture from getting in and all it really does is fill voids. So usually just injecting a cementitious grout uh, exacerbates the issue, right? Now there's some testing that's been done for... Um, the injection of like an expansive polymer, a geopolymer inside the section, which runs the same idea as that cementitious grout, but most polymers are hydro insensitive, which means you're providing some varying degree of water resistance to this, this slab here, right? And everything underneath, but it's only kind of effective. The higher your PI and your EI, the more difficult it is for polymer to travel through. It's not porous, it's not permeable. So this, this, this viscous liquid that is your, your, your uh, iso and resin mixing and then going in under a low pressure doesn't travel very far. So it's very difficult. Now, now again, testing's been done. If you're underneath a roadway or something like that, it increases the resilient modulus of the soil and it increases the strength of the soil and so on and so forth. So long story short, um, there's some moderate success with the injection of a geopolymer underneath there but this may or may not be the solution if you have a very high EI or PI, otherwise known as a medium dense or very dense, dense clay. These usually have these, okay? Um, so you gotta pay attention to stuff like that. It, it, it's, it, it's a lot. And this is one of those reasons why I say engineering is very important. Understanding the soil type and what you're, what you're doing and dealing with is very important long before you go through the estimating process and actually try to pull permits for something that may or may not work, right? Um, that whole thing about engineers who are not even in the state, who never set eyes on the site, who never do a soils test and who never do everything else, they're covered in their contract to say, hey, we didn't do this, so we're not responsible for it. But this is a very important element in getting all this stuff done, right? Anyway, so, um, polymer, whatever. Now, peering systems, uh, steel underpinning systems. You can use, uh, what, let's cut this out. You can do your excavation. Nah, nah. There you go, there you go. 
and then you put your bracket on, right? And then you either use a push pier system or you put use a helical system. Like so, right? So I put the peering system, the push peering system is good for re-leveling the house. Right? As far but if you have a super high EIPI, A, you need to make sure the pier goes deep enough because you have that 10 feet of unrestrained, unrestrained fill we were talking about, pretend it's floating, you may have to pre-drill this section if the soil's too hard for the push pier to get down 10 feet. Other than that, it's great for re-leveling, but if the clay soil is in a currently compacted state when you do the re-leveling and then water is introduced and it expands and it pushes us up, issue, right? Uh, or if it's already in an expanded state and then you push up with that. So if I lift this two inches, right? Uh, the soil is currently expanded and I pick this up two inches and there's a void, right? Most people want to come back and they fill that void with polymer or cement or whatever else. What I'm doing, the purpose of that for seismic reasons is restoring the connection of the soil to the footing, right? So you're restoring the soil support and, and when you're talking with plan checkers, you talk about how you're neither strengthening nor inhibiting the seismic resilience of the footing or the structure because you're filling that void. But the polymer is not yet expanded and you created the void, and now you filled this hole, so the, uh, you're restoring that connection, right? What happens when the soil expands? The soil pushes up on the polymer, polymer pushes up on the footing, footing goes up anyway. So that's one of the challenges for doing a project like this, very, very difficult uh, to sort of navigate with that push peering system. Um, the helical peering system, a little more ideal, you can hit that target torque and depth when you, when you drive down and, and hit the thing, and then you can do all the leveling that you're looking in order to do, right? Then, still don't recommend filling it with polymer or, or, or um, cementitious grout, don't recommend it, but people do, whatever. Um, if you get that helical pier down, uh, what the helical pier does, like, like when you do it sideways in order to pull a, a, a wall straight or whatever, the helical pier, so, Remember the video, like push piers is like hitting a nail into something. If you pull it up, it pulls out, right? But a helical pier is like a screw going into wood. You pull it up, it doesn't work. It pulls the wood up with it, right? So this will provide axial resistance for both up and down, which may or may not, as long as you bolt this into the footing, may or may not anchor that down and overpower the strength of the soil. Depending on, once again, this. Super important, right? So you have to pay attention to this. This is what engineers are for. These are what the experts are for. That's what you do. Anyway, sorry. So helical piers may or may not work. Better than a push pier generally for uh, expansive clay soils conditions. Maybe uh, polymer mm, underneath a house. Mm, you may be, again, you might get the leveling that you're looking for, but as far as long-term stability, very, very difficult to provide a warranty for, and um, there is a video on warrant, uh, sorry, not warranty, there's a video on contracts that's coming up that you may want to pay attention to as far as warranties and engineering and all that fun jazz goes, all right? Finally, uh, there's two other ways that you can approach this that I've seen. Um, one of them I'm not incredibly familiar with, but I've seen it done a couple times at this point. Wow, that's terrible. Ha. So, um, one thing that I've seen done, again, not an expert here on this one, but uh, what they did is they built like a grade beam, and usually, you know, you build a grade beam here and you attach it in with rebar and rebar and rebar and rebar, right? And that's cool. Uh, what they do is they build this grade beam like so. Um, and, and so, if I were looking like at the side, if this, that's a different side, but if I'm looking at like the front face, this grade beam would also run like consistently, right, all the way across. And what they're doing, so in an overhead view, they would do this, like so, right, so, dotted line, like that. And, and so what they're doing is they're building a concrete apron, that's what they called it. And the idea is when moisture hits and drains and goes and tries to seep down underneath this, this concrete apron for four feet down minimum, uh, further if there's you know other issues, but four feet down minimum creates this sort of impermeable wall 
that nothing can get past, that water can't get past. And if water isn't introduced into the clay soil, then the clay soil can't expand and lift all this stuff up, right? So it's a cool idea, actually. I never really heard that. And never been tested. I've personally never done it, but based off of this idea, if it actually works, then you could do a polyurethane cutoff wall, where instead of your four foot centers or five foot centers, which some people do five foot centers, it's not recommended, but they do that. Um, you can you can like reduce the spacing and build a cutoff wall on a zipper pattern, like so, and then just build the polymer wall there the same way, right? So um, that's another method. Now, if you wanna make sure 100% Things get done good. Things are, are appropriate and, and things are great and whatever, then prepare to spend a ton of money because what you're gonna do is dig the soil out, which you may have to demo the structure in order to do it, but dig the soil out as far down, as far down as the, uh, the clay soil. So if it's 10 feet down, probably 10 feet, dig the soil out and then import an engineered fill that you recompact underneath the house in order to support it, <coughs> excuse me, and much like a uh, footing replacement or something like that, you can only do like 10 feet at a time if you wanted to do this properly without the house like falling. Um, it's tough. It's very expensive to get underneath a footing 10 feet unrestrained. You might put push piers in in order to like put temp shoring to temporarily brace it, but then compacting it's kind of a pain. So. It's tough. It's very tough. So long story short, uh, if you have clay soils issues with a high expansion index and plasticity index, it's medium dense clay or very dense clay, um, you want to make sure that you have good drainage maintenance practices, right? Make sure it's installed, make sure it's maintained properly, make sure that the water never ponds in any one area so the soil doesn't get a chance to expand and constrict. Still might not solve the problem. If you run into the issue, my highest recommendation is to hire an engineer. Do not do the thing with the contractors coming out and giving you a quote first. It's going to be entirely wrong. Hire the engineer, get the expert's advice, make sure they do the soils test, get some parameters, and come up with the plan before uh, moving forward with some idea on an underpinning system, uh, whether it's concrete, polyurethane, or steel, right? Engineering is going to be your brightest first bet when it comes to clay soil issues underneath the house. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Um, obviously, it gets a lot more complex than that, but this is just an introduction. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please uh, put it in the comments below or message me directly. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, and do all of that fun jazz, and I will talk to you guys later.